Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansom. Today we're going to go through AP Psychology key terms for topic 1.4, the brain. So maybe you've already listened to 1.4, the information where I'm giving you about the CED questions and going through some of the background and more detailed information. That's great. This is the one that goes with it and that's just the key terms. So we're going to look at definitions and we're going to look at examples of each of the key terms that are important and there are a lot of them. So if you are liking my videos so far, please can I ask you to subscribe and like the videos. It really helps me a lot. Here we go. Let's have a look at this list. Oh, sorry. This list is long. Okay. So there's a lot of words in this particular section, a lot of important words that you are definitely going to see somewhere in an MCQ or an FRQ on test day or in your unit tests in your class. So it's really important to understand these. Okay. I really feel like writing them down is a really, um, it's really a good thing to do because as you're writing them, you're remembering them. It's not the same thing as maybe looking at them on say like a Quizlet. Quizlet is fantastic. I love Quizlet. I mean, I use it with my students as well, but it's there is something to be said for writing each of these down so that you can remember them better. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with cognitive neuroscience. So cognitive neuroscience is the scientific field that studies the biological processes underlying cognition, focusing on how the brain enables mental processes such as perception, memory, language, and decision-making. So what does this mean? It means that researchers in cognitive neuroscience use brain imaging techniques like fMRI, which is functional magnetic resonance imaging, to study how different areas of the brain are involved in tasks such as learning, new information, or processing language. By correlating brain activity with cognitive tasks, they aim to understand how neural processes support various aspects of human cognition. Corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a thick bundle of nerve, nerve fibers that connect the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. So it facilitates communication between those two hemispheres, allowing them to share information and coordinate activities. So for example, when a person performs a task that requires integration of information from both sides of the body, such as playing the piano, typing on a keyboard, the corpus callosum plays a crucial role in ensuring smooth coordination between the left and right hands by transmitting signals across the brain hemispheres. Functions. Now, functions in relation to psychology. So in the context of psychology, functions refers to the mental processes or abilities performed by different parts of the brain or cognitive systems. So the function of memory, for example, involves the brain's ability to encode, store, and retrieve information. For instance, recalling a past event from childhood relies on the brain's memory function to retrieve stored information about that event. The glial cells. The glial cells, also known as neuroglia or simply glia, are non-neuronal cells in the central nervous system. And we did that earlier in this unit. We talked about the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system as well. We did that earlier in this unit that provides support and protection for the neurons. One type of glial cell, oligodendrocytes in the CNS and Schwann cells in the PNS produce myelin, a fatty substance that insulate axons and help speed up transmission of nerve impulses. This insulation is crucial for efficient communication between the neurons, facilitating rapid signaling within the nervous system. Hemispheric lateralization. Hemispheric lateralization refers to the specialization of functions between the left and right hemisphere of the brain. So in most individuals, language processing is predominantly localized in the left hemisphere, while spatial awareness and visual motor coordination tend to be more dominant in the right hemisphere. This specialization allows for efficient processing of different types of information across the brain's hemisphere. Medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is a part of the brainstem located between the spinal cord and the pons. It plays a crucial role in controlling vital autonomic functions such as breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. And if you remember, we also did that term in 1.1. The medulla oblongata re regulates involuntary processes like breathing and heartbeat without conscious effort. So for instance, it adjusts breathing rates in response to change in oxygen levels or carbon dioxide levels in the blood, ensuring that the body maintains homeostasis. Okay, so next one, midbrain. The midbrain, also known as the mesencephalon, is a small region of the brainstem that connects the forebrain and the hindbrain. It is involved in various sensory and motor functions, including vision, hearing, motor control, and arousal. 
The midbrain plays a, a critical role in coordinating eye movements. So for example, when tracking a moving object with your eyes, the midbrain helps adjust the position and orientation of the eyes to maintain focus on that object. It also integrates sensory information related to visual and auditory stimuli, contributing to our ability to perceive and respond to our environment. Split brain patient. A split brain patient is an individual who has undergone a surgical procedure called corpus callosotomy, which involves severing the corpus callosum. That was the one we talked about earlier, the band of nerve fibers connecting the two hemispheres of the brain. This procedure is usually performed to reduce the severity of seizures in individuals with severe epilepsy. If a split brain patient sees an object with their right eye, which is processed by the left hemisphere, they can name the object because the left hemisphere controls language. However, if they see the same object with their left eye, processed by the right hemisphere, they might be unable to name it. Even though they can still draw or select the object with their left hand, this demonstrates how the two brain hemispheres can function independently when the connection is cut. Temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is a part of the brain located on the sides of the, of the head, near the ears. It's responsible for processing auditory information, language comprehension, and memory formation. For example, the temporal lobe helps you understand and process spoken language. If you hear someone say your name, the temporal lobe helps you recognize and interpret that sound. Frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is a part of the brain located at the front of the head, behind the forehead. It's responsible for higher cognitive functions such as decision making, problem solving, planning, and controlling behavior and emotions. So when you decide to raise your hand to answer a question in class, the frontal lobe is involved in making that decision and coordinating the movement. Parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is the region of the brain located near the top at and back of the head. It processes sensory information such as touch, temperature, and pain, and helps with spatial awareness and coordination. So when you feel the texture of an object with your hand, the parietal lobe interprets the sensory information, allowing you to recognize whether it's smooth, rough, or soft. Occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is the part of the brain located at the back of the head. It is primarily responsible for processing visual information, such as interpreting colors, shapes, and motion. When you look at a picture, the occipital lobe helps you recognize and understand what you're seeing, such as under identifying objects, reading words, or recognizing faces. The thalamus. The thalamus is a small structure located deep within the brain that acts as a relay station, transmitting sensory information like touch, sight, or sound to the appropriate areas of the cerebral cortex for processing. So when you hear a sound, the thalamus directs the auditory information to the auditory cortex so that your brain can process it and understand the sound. Cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the outer layer of the brain. It's responsible for, function, for the complex functions like thought, perception, decision-making. It's involved in processing sensory information, controlling voluntary movements, and enabling higher cognitive abilities. So when you solve a math problem, the cerebral cortex is actively involved in thinking, analyzing, and making decisions. Broca's area. Broca's area is a region in the frontal lobe of the brain that is crucial for speech production and language processing. So if someone's having difficulty forming complete sentences, like after a stroke, it might be due to the damage they've incurred in the Broca's area. And this area helps you articulate words and construct sentences when you speak. Amygdala. The amygdala is a small almond-shaped structure in the brain's temporal lobe that plays a key role in processing emotions, especially fear and aggression. So if someone feels intense fear when encountering a dangerous situation, it's, it's the amygdala that triggers that emotional response. So for instance, a person might have a strong fear reaction when they are seeing a snake, that would be me, due to the amygdala's activation. Motor cortex. The motor cortex is a region in the brain that controls voluntary muscle movements. It's located in the frontal lobe. When you decide to pick up a cup, your motor cortex sends a signal to the muscles in your arm and, and hand to perform that action. Reticular formation. The reticular formation is a network of neurons in the brainstem that regulates arousal, alertness, and attention. It helps you stay awake and focused when you're working on or driving. If it's damaged, you might have trouble, a trouble staying alert. Brainstem. 
The brainstem is the part of the brain that connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls basic functions like breathing, heartbeat, and blood pressure. The brainstem manages automatic functions like regulating your heartbeat while you sleep or controlling your breathing rate during exercise. Hippocampus. The hippocampus is a brain structure involved in forming and retrieving memories and spatial navigation. It helps you remember where you parked your car or recall the facts you've learned in class. And just remember, every time you see hippocampus, just think memory. Forebrain. The forebrain is the largest part of the brain, responsible for complex functions like thinking, emotion, and sensory processing. It includes structures such as the cerebral cortex and the limbic system. So the forebrain allows you to plan a vacation, thinking and making decisions, and experience emotions like happiness or sadness. Spinal cord. The spinal cord is a long, thin bundle of nerves extending from the brain stem down the back, responsible for transmitting signals between the brain and the rest of your body. It carries motor commands from your brain to your muscles and sensory information from your skin to your brain. So like when you touch a hot stove and you pull your hand away quickly, that's the message that's being sent. Hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small brain region that regulates essential body, bodily functions like temperature, hunger, thirst, and sleep. It also controls the pituitary gland, which affects hormone release. So it helps re regulate your body's temperature by initiating sweating if you're hot or shivering when you're cold. The limbic system. The limbic system is a group of interconnected brain structures involved in emotions, memory, and motivation. So it includes the hippocampus, amygdala, and other areas. The limbic system helps you recall a happy memory like your last birthday party and experience emotions such as joy and fear. Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area is a region in the brain's left temporal lobe involved in language comprehension and processing. So it helps you understand spoken and written language. If it's damaged, you might be able to speak fluently, but struggle at understanding others or making sense of the sentences. So remember, we talked about Broca's area. So these are the two that will come up, for example, in well, an FRQ or an MCQ, it'll be like Broca's area versus Wernicke's area. So you really do need to know the difference between those two. Pons. The pons is a part of the brainstem that connects different parts of the brain and helps regulate breathing, sleep, and facial expressions. It assists in coordinating movements between the left and right sides of your body and helps control facial movements like smiling or blinking. Cerebellum. The cerebellum is a brain region located at the back of the brain that coordinates voluntary movements, balance, and posture. It helps you maintain balance while like, for example, if you're riding a bike and endures smooth, precise movements, such as playing a musical instrument. Somatosensory cortex. The somatosensory cortex is a region in the parietal lobe that processes sensory information from the body, such as touch, temperature, and pain. It allows you to feel and accurately locate the sensation of a light touch on your skin or the heat of a hot surface. So now we're going to go through all of the words again. I'm just going to flash them on the screen. So go through your cards, try to do them without your card, double check. You can pause what you need to do, but just so that you actually are aware of these words. So if you do see them on an MCQ, an FRQ, you can identify them in your mind and you can apply them to whatever the question is asking you. So we're going to start with cognitive neuroscience. Corpus calamus, callosum, sorry. Functions. Glial cells. Hemispheric lateralization. Medulla oblongata. Midbrain. Split brain patient. Temporal lobe. Frontal lobe. Parietal lobe, occipital lobe, thalamus, cerebral cortex, Broca's area, amygdala, motor cortex, particular formation, brainstem, hippocampus, Forebrain, spinal cord, hypothalamus, limbic system, Wernicke's area, pons, cerebellum, 
somatosensory cortex. That was the last one. Hopefully you did really well on those. And if you didn't, go back and keep going through your cards because you really want to form those memories. You really want to encode those words into your brain. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me a lot. See you next time.